welcome to the Splash Live, Greater West Bloomfield's only local morning show, giving you exclusive access into people, businesses, and events in our community. We're bringing you this show live daily weekdays at 9.30 a.m. with your host, me, Maddie Mustion. Before we dive into today's show, every week we highlight someone, an educator, student, business, or organization from our Greater West Bloomfield community going above and beyond. If you'd like to submit an entry for someone, you can scan the QR code on the screen and fill out the Google form with the person's name, their contact information, and a couple of reasons why you think they should be recognized here on the Splash Live for our personal week. Now let's go check out what's going on in our Greater West Bloomfield community. The first event we want to look at are the West Bloomfield Township Public Library virtual events. The West Bloomfield Township Public Library are hosting a ton of fun and educational events for residents of West Bloomfield and all age groups. Tomorrow on Thursday, they are having a, their talk titled The Lonely Hearts Killers that goes in depth about the Michigan crimes of Beck and Ferdinand and other Cupid Heart Killers that preyed on lonely hearts in Michigan. This discussion will be led by one of the great West Bloomfield librarians and allow you to dive deep into the story of Lonely, Heart, lonely Hearts Killers history in Michigan. For all these events and others, you can register on their website at wbidlib.com. And something also that is ongoing at the library is your ability to rent out those great literacy and tender topic kits to help your child with literacy skills and ways to learn about tough topics that are happening in our community. You can rent these out by stopping into the library or calling youth services desk to register for the kit of your choice. Something that is happening this Saturday, April 2nd, the Kiko Harbor Canal cleanup the Kiko Harbor Parks and Recreation needs volunteers to help them clean out the mouth of the canal that runs through Fran Leaf Park and alongside Willow Beach swim site. You can contact the Kiko Harbor Parks and Recreation to join and help clean up our community while also enjoying the outdoors. This is a great way to get out and give back to your Kiko Harbor community through making sure that the canal is clean for the springtime. Our last event we want to look at is the Sylvan Salon event. This will be their fifth salon that they are hosting. The salon events are at their core opportunities to explore a myriad of topics with friends and neighbors, new and old. This will be their third part of their events covering the Holocaust. For part three on April 5th, Sylvan Lake residents will be relating to their parents' Holocaust stories. It will be hosted by Sally Rogers Siegel and David Frankel. Mr. Lessing will also be returning as a guest, this time to listen and learn, as he won't be formally presenting again. This salon will take place at 6 p.m. for their social hour and then their presentations will run from 7 p.m. until 8.15. If you have any questions or would like to reserve your spot at the talks, you can contact Kelly Krause at 248-797-6730 for more information. All the proceeds for this event will help fund live music in Sylvan Lake this summer. If you have an event you'd like us to feature here on the Splash Live, you can send us a message on our social media pages at Civic Center TV and on Facebook at Civic Center TV 15. Coming up, I will be talking to Steve Kaplan, the Township Supervisor for West Bloomfield. But before that, this week we nominated someone for our personal week who has dedicated the past 30 years to making sure that West Bloomfield Parks are maintained for our West Bloomfield community. Joe Ketchum, Park Superintendent for West Bloomfield Parks and Recreation, has worked with the staff and his team to create a fun and beautiful park environment for our community that has allowed West Bloomfield Parks to be a place where residents can come and socialize. Let's go check out why we named Joe Ketchum our person of the week. Our person of the week is someone who has given over 30 years of hard work to West Bloomfield Parks and Recreation. Joe Ketchum has worked as the athletic field maintenance supervisor and worked his way up the ladder to become the park superintendent, where he looks over the various projects in the parks as well as supervising his park staff. Joe has also joined us on the Splash Live to talk about his position as park superintendent. What do you want me to talk about first? Like We, we have three major projects this summer. Um, first one I'll start off with is an important one. We're going to be installing hawk lights along our trail network, the West Bloomfield Trail. Um, these hawk lights will be what Joe's hard work has been recognized in the community through winning multiple awards, such as the Park Resource Leadership Award that was given to him by the Michigan Recreation and Parks Association. His dedication to West Bloomfield Parks and Rec allows each and every community member to spend time outdoors with their family and friends. 
After 30 years with WB Parks and Rec, Joe is retiring in early May, leaving behind a legacy of commitment to WB Parks that his staff hopes to uphold. I would just say, you know, just keep keep an eye open, you know, on our website to see updates for any possible uh, park closures and court closures. Um, and to, you know, if anybody has ideas to make sure that they let our parks commissioners know and let the staff know. Through his love for West Bloomfield and care for nature, Joe has made an impact in our West Bloomfield community for years to come. His dedication to WB Parks and Rec is just one of the many reasons why we named Joe Ketchum our Person of the Week. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning, Joe. Well, you're welcome. Have a great day and everybody have a great holiday season. Congratulations to Joe on his retirement and thank you for making West Bloomfield Parks one of the great assets to our community here in West Bloomfield. If you would like to attend his retirement party, you can head over to the West Bloomfield Parks website under Joe's staff page profile and fill out the Google form to attend. Later on, we'll be taking a look at a club here in West Bloomfield that has provided a place for archers in our area to gather and practice their archery skills. But before that, we'll be talking to Steve Kaplan, Township Supervisor for West Bloomfield. All that and more after this short break. We'll be right back with The Splash Live. In the face of COVID-19, staying healthy is important. And now the same is true as we face the flu. Influenza has the potential to infect millions, putting lives and the healthcare system at risk. Fortunately, it's easy to protect yourself. The flu vaccine is safe and effective, and with COVID-19 still spreading, it's essential. To see how you can hit this virus head on, visit michigan.gov slash flu. Can I ask you a question? Uh, Why do you want to get the COVID-19 vaccine? I don't like getting sick. The virus will die. It will be easy to not catch it. Keep my family safe and keep playing soccer. Because I love being vaccinated. What's your hope for everyone? I hope everybody gets the vaccine. To keep safe and strong. Be like happy, having fun everywhere. Everyone stay safe and hope you get the vaccine. And now, back to The Splash, live. Welcome back to The Splash Live. I'm your host, Maddie Mustgen. Joining us now to talk about what's going on in our West Bloomfield community is Township Supervisor for West Bloomfield, Steve Kaplan. Steve, thanks so much for joining us again today. There, we can hear you a little bit, Steve. Sorry, can you hear me now? Yes, there we go, perfect. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, Maddie, technology. <laughs> Technology's the worst sometimes, Steve. <laughs> you mentioned Joe Ketchum, who had worked for the Parks Commission for 30 years, and any of our residents, former or current, who had dealings with the Parks Commission knew Joe Ketchum, and he was just a superb employee, and your recognition of him is well-deserved. I was thinking about him, that he worked for the Parks Commission for 10,950 days, in 1500 weeks so he certainly contributed and what is not well known about him is he could have been a great athlete because on the football field you wouldn't be able to catch him <laughs> that that is a great one and i i believe so i believe that i believe that fact about him and he yes he was a great great asset to our community and we it makes sense that we recognize him here um and steve something that i wanted to start off talking about um, with you is the State of the Communities Address that you joined us for a couple of weeks back. I just wanted to run through that with you and talk about how important it is um, and the information that you shared in the community to address. Um, can you just talk a little bit about how important it is for residents of West Bloomfield to check that out and uh, maybe highlight some of the things that you addressed there? Sure. Well, Civic Center TV has spearheaded the state of the township, state of the city. So as you know, with 36 square miles in our area, it also including Kegel Harbor, Orchard Lake, and Sylvan Lake, when residents hear a summary of what had occurred in the previous year, I, I think it makes them feel even prouder of living in this area, any of the four communities, because 
the resident then knows if, if the resident doesn't attend the, the meetings as to what has happened, what, what developments are there, what environmental protections are in place. And it's, it's good educational vehicle for our residents and our employees. And then Steve, some updates in our West Bloomfield community. Um, as we are heading into spring, it's still pretty cold out today, but we're looking into the spring and the summertime now. Um, you guys are having some waste hauling through GFL. Could you tell us a little bit about some of the different um, opportunities and things that GFL has in our community, including yard waste and some of those bulk items that they can take for you? Thank you. GFL has been our single mandatory waste hauler since 2016, preceding GFL was Rizzo, and as you know, the Rizzo Corporation has some difficulties with two of their leaders being banished to prison for soliciting bribes. The account was taken over by GFL. Before that, there was Richfield, Allied, and other companies. So what you might find interesting is in 2009, the township board, and I was a member, we had been we had received criticisms and complaints from residents about the fact that there were six different waste hauling companies serving West Bluefield, which meant that you, Maddie, as a resident, you, you would contact on your own any of the six companies and reach an agreement with them as to the price and the services. Well, what did that mean? It meant on four days per week, there would be six different trucks on the road. And our, our community is very environmentally sensitive and Obviously, that's not favorable for for road for pollution, for damage to the road, for traffic jams, and therefore, in 2009, it's been 13 years. Our township, along with many other townships in the community, is a single waste hauler, which means that a resident can hire his or her own waste hauling company at about $250 per year, but would also have to pay for the single mandatory waste hauling services of GFL. And we receive perhaps six calls per year from residents who are irked that they, they have no choice in selecting their own waste hauler, but actually they can if they wanna pay both fees. Well, none of that is really very interesting. What is interesting is GFL and the, and the township. So the township, we act as the conduit or the intermediary for our residents and the township board and staff have gained some concessions from GFL. Among them are there's a snowbird rate. A resident who will be outside of West Bloomfield for 30 days or more continuously, all the way to six months continuously, will not pay for services for that month or for those six months or for the three months. Secondly, there are residents who own two homes in West Bloomfield, maybe a small cottage off a of Union Lake Road, and also the main home. And if garbage services are not utilized at the second or smaller home, then the resident Maddie is only charged for one fee and, and not two fees. And then Steve, could we talk a little bit too about the GFL senior discounts, um, as well as if you have any residents who are struggling maybe to figure out how to pay their GFL bill, how you guys are assisting residents with those billing disputes? Well, this year, Actually, it's it's, it's uh, April 1 through March 31, but calling it a yearly bill, the, the price did increase by 4%, and we did our best in encouraging GFL to maintain the rates. But a senior, Maddie, who pays in full, so the, the, the full rate is $244.32. But a senior paying in full by April 15th, that rate is discounted all the way to $213.48 which is $4 per month. And obviously we would like the rate to be lower, but if you compare that rate to other communities, we're actually, it's a very reasonable price through GFL. For a non-senior, a rate at $225.48 if payment is made in full by April 15th. And then Steve, um, coming up next Saturday, you guys have the Household Hazardous Waste Day. Can you talk a little bit about some of the different items that residents here in West Bloomfield can drop off to discard at Town Hall? Sure, so Household Hazardous Waste is overseen in part by GFL and, and they're paying for it. It's about 90,000 per year for our two Household Hazardous Waste Days. And as you said, it's next week, it's April, 9th Saturday between 9 and noon 
And for our seniors, 62 and older, they can stop by on Friday, April 8th, between four and six. So we accept everything you can imagine. It's, it's electronics, batteries, fluid, bulbs, medication, large appliances, anything that the resident does not want to have buried in a, in a landfill. So not every resident is concerned about the environment and the ecology, but many of them are. And some people move to West Bloomfield because of the environmental aspects. But this way, these items are not ending up in a landfill. Shredding, as you know, we've separated shredding from the HA, the household hazardous waste day because we found that 40% of our residents only are here for shredding. And for them to wait in line, Maddie, for an hour, even up to two hours, is not fair to them. So the shredding dates are April 23rd and September 24th. Those are Saturdays, also 9 to noon. And for our seniors, they could stop by on the preceding Friday between 4 and 6 p.m. And uh, senior means 62 years of age or older. And so, Maddie, you're not even halfway there. <laughs> well, thank you, Steve. And it's always a pleasure to have you on The Splash. We appreciate you joining us this morning. Thank you for inviting me. Have a great week. Thanks, Steve. You too. Once again, I was joined by Township Supervisor for West Bloomfield, Steve Kaplan, talking about some of the great things going on in our West Bloomfield community, including that hazardous waste day that is happening on April 9th. A historic club here in West Bloomfield is providing a social place to practice archery and learn from other members. Detroit Archers of West Bloomfield provides their members with practice to hone their archery skills while also allowing non-members to try their sport through open range practice. Splash reporter Calvin Brown talked with Kevin Marshall, a member at Detroit Archers, about the history behind their location and the programs and leagues that they have for their members. Let's go check it out. With the warm weather turning over a new leaf, archers around West Bloomfield Township are itching to fix their fletching and start flinging arrows. Nestled in the thicket along Drake Road, Detroit Archers has been hosting club members for years, and I got to talk to member Kevin Marshall about the program's activities and history of Detroit Archers. Uh, we've been here in this location since 1951 was when we first bought the first 21 acres of property and added another 10 acres in 1964, building the current clubhouse in 1971. The club was originally formed in Detroit in 1928 with Fred Bear as the first president of the, of the club. It's been a, a, a member-driven club ever since 1928. Uh, we currently have approximately 80 member families. When one person joins, the whole family joins. And so you're able to share work hours and shoot leagues and use the club like it as the whole family, not just the person who joins it like a health club. It's not family owned, it's owned by the membership. Uh, when you become a member here, you become a part owner of the club. And you are required to do certain things as part of the membership, but shooting is the most important part of it. Tonight we have the Tuesday Target League. There are kind of two groups of, of shooters here at the club. There are target shooters and there are 3D shooters which shoot foam animals at varying distances. It really test your skills at guessing yardage because the animals are all at different yards. Uh, and then we have a feed -a league that starts and runs in the fall and then the other leagues that start later in the year. Most of the leagues start up right around the new year. And then did Saturday morning archer starts the first Saturday in November. We have a program, the Junior Olympic Archery Development Program, um, an adult program that's led by, uh, by, by Nick DeCreasy. He's a USA Archery coach. It's one-on-one -on -one training, one night a week. I think they're between sessions now, between the winter session and the summer session. Uh, and then on Saturday mornings, we have our Saturday morning archery, where it's kind of a come-as-you-want uh, shooting and there's some some lessons there is not as sophisticated as the Joad or adult program. Then we have on open shooting nights which right now are Saturdays and Sundays. A lot of people are here to practice for the tournament season that comes up indoor and outdoor and or practicing for deer hunting in the fall. Our 
our website is DetroitArchers.com. And we have a calendar on the website that, that lists all the events and open shooting. And please check that calendar. We work on a volunteer basis and some weekends we don't have people to work open shooting so we have to, or we have another event at the club. We love being in West Bloomfield. It's been a great home for us with our open land easement and, and the wetland works and, and, and those kinds of things. And it's been a, a good partnership with the township and we like being in here in the community. Thank you to Kevin Marshall for letting me stop by Detroit Archers Clubhouse in West Bloomfield. If you have any interest at all in archery, you'd be far off target if you didn't look into Detroit Archers. Reporting for The Splash Live, I'm Calvin Brown. Thank you again to Kevin Marshall for talking to us a little bit about Detroit Archers. You can go check them out here in the West Bloomfield community and also on their website at DetroitArchers.com if you have any questions or want to check out their expansive list of events. Joining us now to talk about an amazing organization here in our greater West Bloomfield community is Michael Fraley, the Executive Director for the Hospitality House Food Pantry. Michael, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. So Michael, could we start off first by explaining to our viewers and listeners what the Hospitality House Food Pantry is? Yeah, so we are a 20 year old organization that was started by, I think this is really interesting, but started by three different churches. So community members from three different faiths came together and realized there was hidden hunger in their community and started the pantry in the basement of one of the churches. And from there, it grew. So within two years, it outgrew the space that they had. Um, and members were like storing things in their garages. And so they finally moved to an, a larger space in another church. And then they outgrew that. Um, and then they found their first kind of home. Um, we are a food pantry first and foremost. So we are a pantry of choice, meaning that clients can come um, and receive food for free. Our pantry is set up like a store. And so they get a shopping cart, a volunteer walks them through, they get bags, and they get to choose the items that best suit them and their dietary needs. Um, and so it's based on household size, how much food you can take. Um, but we always have a variety of things for our clients to choose from. I think something that I take personally for granted and something I've really realized in this position is like, I can go to a grocery store and just choose whatever food I want. Um, where when you have limited means or resources, that choice goes away. And a lot of food operations, you receive a box of food. So if you are, if you get five pounds of kielbasa, then you're eating only five pounds of kielbasa. You may not like kielbasa, you may not be able to eat pork, and so that food goes to waste. Um, so here people get to choose from different variety of juices, pastas, rice, cereals. Um, we always have fresh fruit and vegetables, fresh dairy products, fresh bread, and we always have frozen meat for people to choose from. And Michael, could you give us a little bit of insight into, obviously you guys are giving back to the community through the food pantry, but do you guys also have other events or programs that are helping our greater West Bloomfield community? We do. So we, um, here at Hospitality House, we consider our service area all of Oakland and Wayne counties. Uh, we receive a lot of food that we can't necessarily utilize um, sometimes we receive like number 10 cans of food. Those are large like catering cans. We received a whole octopus before, a half a cow. Um, we also, the fruits and vegetables that fresh that we do receive, you know, they're at the end of their life. We may not be able to move off the whole pallet of potatoes we receive or onions um, within that timely manner. And so what we actually do is we redistribute that to eight area soup kitchens. Um, and make sure that those people, it's, you know, soup kitchens can utilize the food that day and so the food doesn't go to waste. Um, as well as we provide food to the student pantries at the Wild Lake School District. And we are helping to provide food to Afghan refugees um, that are culturally appropriate, that are resettling into Oakland County, which really isn't that different from the food that you and I see in the grocery store. It's just basic like dried beans and flour and sugar, more of those kind of raw materials rather than like the pre-made cans or box stuff. Um, we also help to assist homeless clients by putting them into a hotel room with case management services for up to 28 days. Um, and we also have a car repair program. We help current clients of our pantry 
with car repairs, if it's their main mode of transportation, um, and usually it's us and a couple of religious churches come together and contribute. We've helped fix alternators, tires, um, all types of things, transmissions um, for clients to get their vehicles back on the road. Because we all know, like, if you live in Michigan, you want to get food, you're going to need a car to do that, right? Um, we also do a small back to school program as well as um, we do a holiday program around the Christmas season um, for gifts for children as well. And Michael, could you give us a little bit of insight into how our audience can get involved in the hospitality house and help out? Yeah, first and foremost, donations are always welcome. We have been so fortunate that we are heavily supported by our community here. Um, you can donate online at hhfp.org. Um, with the amount of, with the dollar that you give me, I can buy four cans of soup or you can go to the grocery store and I'm not even sure you can buy a can of soup for a dollar at this moment in time with inflation. Um, we have a lot of low cost sources that we can purchase from, um, but we also do take food donations. And we have a lot of people that do food drives for us um, and then drop the food off to us. Um, we have a warehouse with two um, walk-in refrigerators and walk-in freezers, so we can do a lot. Um, just please note, if you donate meat, it has to be frozen. We cannot take fresh meat per health code regulations. Um, if we receive that, we unfortunately have to get rid of it. Um, and then volunteers. So we are a heavily volunteer-run organization. There are only three staff members that oversee the entire agency, and we serve roughly 400 to 500 families every month, and we're open three days a week. Um, so the person at the front desk, the person who does my bookkeeping, the pe volunteers who are doing the shopping, the people in the warehouse, they are all volunteer led and run. So if someone's interested in volunteering, they can go to our website and sign up for long-term and short-term opportunities. And Michael, um, would you just give us that website one more time if someone wanted to reach out and donate or volunteer as we wrap up here? Yes, it's HHF. P dot org, which stands for Hospi Hospitality House Food Pantry. Awesome. Well, Michael, it was such a pleasure having you on this morning, and we so appreciate you giving us some more information about the ho Hospitality House Food Pantry. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate to be able to get the word out, and we are here to serve people. So if anyone knows anyone in need of food, we are here to help. We never turn anyone away. Well, Michael, it was a pleasure having you on. Thanks so much for joining us again. Thanks. You have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Once again, I was joined by Michael Fraley, the executive director for the Hospitality House Food Pantry, telling our audience how they can get involved and also if you have anyone who is in need, how to reach out and get them some help. That's going to do it for today's show. Thank you again to Steve Kaplan and Michael Fraley for joining us this morning on the Splash Live. A special thanks to our Zoom producer, Jared Clark, for coordinating the Zoom and making sure our guests joined us. As always, a big thank you to Calvin Brown, our board operator, for making the show possible each and every morning. And thank you for joining me as we explored all of the people and events in our greater West Bloomfield community. As always, you can make sure to tune in live on Civic Center TV on Comcast Channel 15 and at and Channel 99, Monday through Friday at 9.30 to catch up on what's going on in our greater West Bloomfield community. For all of our friends in Orchard Lake, Sylvan Lake, Kego Harbor, and West Bloomfield, I'm Maddie Mushin. Thank you for watching The Splash Live.